13 Assassins contains outstanding action, and it may be what people remember most after having seen the movie. However, it is what drives that action that makes it all the more effective. Strong acting, characters with an honorable do-or-die motivation, and a setting that feels as real as the time period it portrays. Hey everyone, this is Jan Man, and this is a look back at 2010's 13 Assassins, directed by Takashi Miike. 13 Assassins takes place in 1844 Japan, and right away the visuals bring this Edo period to life. There is so much detail given to wardrobe, hair, makeup, set pieces, even the way the characters speak, which is an older use of the Japanese language. The actors, both in their performances and in their appearance, feel and seem as though they are directly from the era and setting. The movie also does not waste time or meander with the narrative it has to tell. It begins starkly and intensely with a feudal lord committing harakiri, a honor suicide in which he disembowels himself with a sword. This is done because the ruthless lord Naritsuga has killed his family and despite having killed them, Naritsuga's brother, the Shogun, is set to promote him, allowing him to gain full power of the land. This causes a number of samurai led by the older, revered Shimada Shinzaiman to secretly plot and carry out Naritsuga's execution for the betterment of the country. And it becomes easy to get behind these samurai to take Naritsugu out based on how sadistic he is. He not only kills people, but rapes women, maims them for life, and even kills innocent children. He is cold, without remorse or pity, and it's truly a case of wanting to see him get what's coming to him. This is not one of those cases where the bad guy comes off as somewhat cool. He abuses his power for his own demented pleasure of seeing innocent people suffer. One scene in particular showing a woman whom he left a widow, limbless, using her mouth to write total massacre on paper to describe to Shinzaiman what Naritsuga had done to her family is tough to watch. Therefore, the movie could be described in great part and plays out as a revenge movie. There is some true suspense and buildup as the men plot how they will take Naritsugu out, buying out a village to ambush him and his 200 troops as they travel from one place to another, and setting up elaborate traps and defenses therein. It's a long shot that 13 men can take out over 200, but when Shinzaiman holds up the total massacre text written by the limbless woman, it signifies a real actual threat perhaps for the first time to Naritsuga and for karma and good to prevail. What follows is a 45 minute or so non-stop revenge action set piece and it's one of the best ever filmed. It's grounded in reality too. There is no sorcery, fantasy, or anything along those lines. Nor is it boring for one second. It's well choreographed and never loses focus of its purpose and what these samurai are fighting for. Their experience and better training shows as their traps and fighting skills kill off those protecting Naritsuga, but given the sheer number of them, the samurai's desire to die in honor becomes imminent. The movie does such a good job at setting up strong emotional reasons to root for them that when one falls, it's a downer. Director Takashi Miike is known for pushing the boundaries of graphic violence in movies such as Audition or Ichi the Killer. There is graphic violence in 13 Assassins to be sure, but it's grounded in accordance to the narrative, and it would be hard to imagine the movie working without its portrayal of Naritsugu's misanthropy as well as the price people would pay for not standing up against such evil in their world. Mike is able to balance the violence with scenes of human drama, even some low-key humor in places, not to mention tremendous performances on part of the actors, and doing so in a realistic historical setting. There is one quizzical aspect or plot point of the movie, though, involving the character of Kiga Koyata, who is the unlikely 13th assassin, a man who the others find caged in a tree for supposedly seducing his boss's wife. During the final battle, he takes a sword directly through his throat, with death being a certainty. 
but later at the end, he strangely reappears as though he never took the sword, not even a scratch showing, he's alive and well. The director has stated that one can take this as his injury not being as bad as previously thought, though it's pretty obvious that the sword went right through his throat, or that he is a supernatural force, some sort of spiritual intervention to help the samurai, which is the more likely explanation. 13 Assassins is actually a remake of the 1963 Japanese film, The 13 Assassins, but takes that film's basic premise to a greater, grander level. With a greater budget and under Takashi Miike's guidance, it contains one of the longest and best action battle sequences ever shot, and there isn't a set piece or costume that doesn't look or hold true to the era, and there is not a moment where the acting and the character portrayals are not top notch. This is one of the best samurai, action, thriller, drama, period pieces, and one of, if not the best, Takashi Miike movies. <laughs>